tell me about getting Stargate. Had you seen the show before? How aware of it were you? Well, uh, at the time, I was living out in Vancouver, so I was okay. very aware of the show because uh, my friend Gary Jones uh, works in the show. So him, Gary and I were friends for years, and he got the show, and it was like, oh, wonderful, congratulations. And that was great, because, and I was moving up back to Toronto. And the minute you make plans to leave somewhere, that's when you get a job. And, of course, nice. they, they get offered me with uh, those guys. The other guys came up. And so uh, that was like, oh, okay, this is terrific. And it was a comedy team thing, which I love. I mean, I have that from the red green background. I kind of knew how to respond with the person specifically and share it with the room, which was great with John Billingsley. The first time we met was on set that day. And it was just like, oh, we're going to have so much fun because he's has an improv background like I do. So the two of us could just laugh and play along. And, and quite a few of the lines that we made up stayed in the show, which was a lot of fun. Okay. A lot of times they don't do that, you know? I think he was which working on Enterprise at that point, if I'm not mistaken. He had he had already yeah. started that. So he's already got, like, the sci-fi, like, churning through his blood. So it's, Absolutely. That's wild. And, and he brought that with him, which is great, because there was a whole group of fans of the show uh, that week were on set from uh, from Britain. And they were just thrilled because they knew John from the other program as well. They were just very sci-fi buffs. They knew it all. So he was like the star of the room, the fact that he was in two shows. Right, exactly. Tell me about, um, uh, who, who was Jay to you? Who was, who was Jay guy? to me? He was a guy who like, if they had, if they worked on the 12th floor, he was on like the third floor, you know, <laughs> he it was just so far. Maybe he might see them in the cafeteria, maybe in the lobby. You know, just those, that's why we're all here is for those guys. And I just really played up that hero worship like crazy of, you know, he's the star football player in high school. He's the guy that if I could stand next to, everyone's going to like me. You know, he, he was everything seeing those guys. It'd be like being accepted by them would be, oh, this is wonderful for Jay. Cause he was always that guy that kind of pushed out of the circle. He wasn't the cool guy. He was science nerd tripping over his own feet. I always like to think of a character at about, 12 to 15 and then put them in an adult body and see what happens <laughs> you know that's socially you're so awkward at that time you're just everything's racing through your mind you think it's all about you you're so you know aware and i always find that's a good place to start is like how would this person react as a teen and then you know what would you tell yourself 20 years from now <laughs> and then i can build on that and he and it was so much fun that way because they were they were such a family you know, that the, the, all the performers. So it was so easy to be that guy on the outside of that family and just to be a sync event to each and every one of them because I was a fan of the show and it was truly a gift to be on set with them. You know, I, my son was such a MacGyver fan oh, and watching okay. watching the escalation of this was like, you know what I'm doing today? I'm working with MacGyver in a new world. Literally. <laughs> he was so young. <laughs> yeah, literally, exactly. So it was everything about it was kind of easy for me to fall into. And then the script was so good. It was just so much playing. And, and I love that. I mean, I could just picture Martin and Lewis on that other planet doing this stuff. I could picture Abbott and Costello there doing it, you know. So for John and I to be dropped, there was like, we got this. We're going to have so much fun. And Martin Wood, the director, was just lapping every every offer we made. And he'd go too much and we wouldn't do it. And then he'd go perfect. And we would play along with that. And. A lot of little things you just kind of let us do, you know. I'm really glad to hear that you were allowed to feel things out uh, with the material and and kind of dial it around, you know, in front of the camera to make it, you know, exactly the way that you wanted it. Well, and, and the way they wanted it, too, because it, I have to fit in their universe, you know, and, it, and, and being a, a guest in the world. Sometimes, you know, you don't know how thick the ice is in certain areas where you can stand. And there'd be times I'd be like, well, I'm going to try it like this. And they go, mm, too, you know, not really. We want more of this. We know we saw that before in this other show with this character. We need this. And it's like, oh, OK, great. And they were really gentle about nuancing uh, Jay to be bumbling, but not so much so that we wouldn't believe he couldn't do his job ever. You know, so that it needed that element, too, of he could get there. He just had to get there himself. That's it. Exactly. And the other part of it is, and I'm curious to, kn to know if this... I'm sure it occurred to you, but maybe it didn't. I mean, you're representing the fans in in this character in some respect because he's a fan of SG One, just like the audience is the fan is a fan of SG One. If they've stuck around for mm -hmm. six seasons, did that yeah. was that playing into your 
mental process doing this or was it just no the show's not real i'm in this i mean the the, the show is real yeah. i'm in the world i think that's a part of the, the responsibility that comes with it but if you play it honestly and specifically to the just to the character then that will reveal itself because i want i didn't necessarily know or feel i was the audience rep i was just jay's rep and he becomes the, the reflection of all that. I say, that's similar to the Harold character in Red Green, is if I play it for the audience only, then I'm not totally in that moment with them. They just have to ref find themselves within that moment too. And if I'm playing it honestly, they should see that emotion if that's what they tap into, hopefully, that makes people connect. It's the vulnerability of that moment, the, the awkwardness or the, the hero worship. There's so many different emotions floating around with Jay. There was a lot of, things you could grab onto and go for the ride, which I, I hope they found. No, absolutely. I think that, uh, I think that everyone has had a, a fantasy, you know, here and there about, uh, here or there about, um, rescuing Captain Kirk, you know, or yeah. whoever your analog for Captain Kirk is you know, in, in a different situation. Yeah. And so he, he gets to, uh, he gets to execute that. But at the end of the day, it's it's, a, it's an interesting choice that was worked into the episode because O'Neill is not thrilled by scientists. Never has been. No. They don't listen to him. No. So he has some some justification there. But it was really uh, it, it, it was it was a, a huge departure from the show because uh, we're, we're pulling back the veil a little bit, just a little bit of fourth wall breaking. Not a lot, but just enough to say, you know what? Uh, we're going to play with this character for uh, this this sequence of events and this this kind of preposterous situation for this episode. Stargate was really good about once a season of doing this with a character, yes. uh, and I I think that it I think that it worked out pretty well because it could have fallen flat on its face. You know, if you're what you're watching this and it's like, or you're you're doing the material, it's like we've got to make sure that we get this right because we're awfully on the nose about this yeah the circumstances of this situation about the the, yeah. the scientist who's going to be saving the lives of the heroes for change but yeah and it had to be a very nerdy scientist because it couldn't be anybody more heroic than them otherwise so show changes you know that's it, it becomes, we start one of watching that him that's it exactly you know and i didn't i wouldn't mind that you know that'd be okay <laughs> <laughs> felger in space you know <laughs> but that that's the the function oftentimes when you're the guest star for the week is you know you you're raised up high but you're you're not forever so right. you, you know that for sure too you know that going in as well so no matter what heroic or misstep you take the world will come back to normal by the end of the 60 minutes aside from billingsley uh do you have any memories from that first episode yeah um so i mean when you get to be uh, backstage a little bit it was so much fun like the the, the weight of of the of the costumes you know like they're made out of rubber tires you know the jaffa so it's like that's that's really heavy stuff so my respect for the background performers wearing it all day and running and fighting you go oh that's good on you guys this stuff is really heavy to wear so that that was fun i remember at one point the one guy came up and he said uh, something why are you here and something like that and I impersonated his voice back. Going, well, we are blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> he is that sick. wasn't in the script. I think it's something he ate. <laughs> yeah, he was <laughs> something like that. Yeah, he was sick. But I was just basically having fun with that actor's delivery. So, you know, afterwards, uh, Martin said, that's hilarious. We're keeping that. And it was like, oh, OK. So that became the thing. And I don't think the poor actor knew that basically I was impersonating him you know, with his delivery. Why are you here? Well, we are. <laughs> so things like that, I remember, because they were just they would celebrate fun moments of of things like when I landed in the when we landed in the uh, the, the stars, the, the gate. I would all crunched up in a in a ball, like because I had no idea where we were going to land or how we were going to land. I never did this before. So when the lights, get, when they said in action, and I curled up in the ball, they had to do it a couple of times because the crew was dying laughing because it was like no one arrives in a new world that way. They all come in superhero. You know? <laughs> Here's a guy who's almost going to wet his pants right away. You know, so it's things like that. They were just like, have fun and just keep going. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.